welcome. I'm Holly. Hey, everybody. I'm Shane. So today we're talking about which came first, the turkey, gobble gobble gobble, or Thanksgiving, <laughs> part one. So the vocabulary words are roast. Roast. We roasted the chicken over an open fire for several hours. Mm, yummy. Mm. <laughs> harvest. Harvest. This year's harvest came a few weeks early.、Mm. Historical. Historical. Linda wrote a paper on great historical figures of the 20th century,、That's、which、me. is not Shane. <laughs> Mention. Mention. You forgot to mention that Pam would be at the party. I hate her. You know that. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about Thanksgiving, uh, right? Uh, uh. And I've always seen on TV shows and movies Thanksgiving was this. Big celebration with a huge feast, and of course, the main dish, the big turkey. And I always get so jealous because <laughs> we don't have that in Taiwan. So,、Aww. why do you guys have a turkey for Thanksgiving? Well, if you ask any American, the story we know is the Pilgrims came to America on the Mayflower,、mm. and then to celebrate the big. Bounty. When they did the harvest, they had lots of food, and they celebrated with the Native Americans.、Mm. So they all sat down together, and they ate turkey. Ah! But、mm. in fact, it just says that they had fowl, and、oh. fowl could be turkey, could be geese. A, yeah, there's a lot there of ducks, different <laughs> types of birds that it can be. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe it was turkey. But we have turkey now. Yeah. And why don't we learn a little bit more about the turkey and its roots in Thanksgiving? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Which came first, the turkey or Thanksgiving? Every autumn, Americans sit down to enjoy a Thanksgiving meal, which usually has a roasted turkey as its main dish. This bird has become such a central part of Thanksgiving that the holiday has come to be known as Turkey Day. If you ask an American why the turkey is the star of the meal, they'll likely bring up one of the most important Thanksgivings, which took place in 1621. Today's lesson is called "Which Came First: The Turkey or Thanksgiving?" Part one. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. And I'm Mike. It must be November, so we're doing a Thanksgiving article. It's a very famous and well-known and popular American holiday from this month. And yes, along with Thanksgiving, the big meal where people come back home and have a big family reunion. Along with that Thanksgiving meal comes turkey, the main dish, the main Thanksgiving、mm. meat. That meat eaters might want to eat. So the question is here: Which came first, the turkey, the bird, the meat, or the meal, the Thanksgiving meal? I guess this is like a play on that sort of old question、the、that you think about. The chicken or the egg? Which came first, the chicken or、gotcha. the egg? That one's harder to answer. I think with this one. It's probably a little easier, but who knows? We're going to read about it, and there could be some surprises. Anyways, every autumn, Americans sit down to enjoy a Thanksgiving meal, which usually has a roasted turkey as its main dish. Yes, whenever you sit down to a Thanksgiving dinner, that turkey is going to be the centerpiece of everything. But how did it get there? How did these two things? How did they get bonded and stuck together forever? That's a good question. But first, let's figure out what exactly we're eating. Of course, turkey is a bird. It's like a really big chicken.、Um, but how you make the turkey—that's what the word we're looking at here talks about. Yeah, when we're talking about food, we often have a word in front of it that describes how the food is prepared or cooked. And in this case, the turkey we're going to eat is roasted. Now, there, of course, roasted is like an adjective. It's roasted turkey. But to roast is to cook something using dry, hot heat 
inside a kind of container of some kind. An oven is generally how we roast things. You can also bake things. It's very similar. If you want to make bread, a cake, a pie, or get that turkey or chicken or ham nice and golden brown, you stick it in the oven at a very high heat, two, three hundred degrees, and it cooks for a while. It's roasting. It's dry heat that's cooking the meat or whatever it is. For example, we roasted the chicken over an open fire. Fire for several hours. I guess you could have fried turkey. Yeah, you could have grilled turkey. Mm, nah, maybe not. Doesn't really work that. Boiled well. turkey. I cook it in hot water. What? You wouldn't want to eat it. You wouldn't want to boil the turkey. But you could make it that way. You wouldn't want to boil the turkey.、Mm -hmm. But the day after Thanksgiving,、mm -hmm. people usually take the turkey bones. Oh sure. And they boil those up and have a delicious have a soup. turkey soup.、Yeah. Anyways, yes, this bird. The turkey bird, or、mm. just turkey.、Mm -hmm. This bird has become such a central part of Thanksgiving that the holiday that the holiday has come to be known as Turkey Day. Okay, the holiday this day has come to be known not just as Thanksgiving but as Turkey Day. Now, if you ask an American why the turkey is the star of the meal, they'll likely bring up one of the most important Thanksgivings. Which took place in 1621, but is this when is this when the turkey became the centerpiece of Thanksgiving celebrations? Maybe the answer isn't so clear cut. Anyways, folks, let's go ahead and take a break. But when we come back, we'll learn or we'll start to learn how the turkey became the centerpiece of every Thanksgiving feast. 好好玩哦！大家好，我是 Hanny。同学们应该都有听过这个问题，到底是先有鸡还是先有蛋呢？那我们的课文标题可能是故意要学这个问题。他问说：“是先有火鸡还是先有感恩节呢？”好，感恩节对美国人来说是重要节日，那这是一个家人团聚一起吃大餐的日子。而感恩节大餐通常会一只烤火鸡来当做主菜。好，我们先来看单字 roast。Roast 是动词，表示炉烤、烘烤。那文中是用过去分词 roasted 来当形容词，形容烤过的。那顺便补充一下，如果是 fried 就表示油炸的 ，grilled 表示烧烤的 ，boiled 表示水煮的。好，另外 Mike 老师说到 reunion 这个字 ，r e u n i o n reunion 表示团聚、重逢。好，课文提到说。火鸡已经成为感恩节非常重要一部分，以至于这个节日渐渐被称为火鸡日。如果你问美国人为什么火鸡是感恩节大餐的主角，他们也许就会提起一六二一年那一年重要的感恩节。好，文中用到 bring up。Bring up 在这边是表达提起、谈到，像是提起某个话题之类的。那 Jeff 老师说，火鸡是感恩节大餐最重要的部分。这时候老师用到 centerpiece 这个字，也就是 center 中心那个字，后面再加上 p i e c e。centerpiece 表示最重要的部分，或者是在中央、在中心的事物。接着回到课文中 ，Which came first, the turkey or Thanksgiving? That year, the Mayflower Pilgrims gathered with Native Americans for a three-day feast to celebrate the bountiful harvest. Since turkeys are native to North America and historical records mention wild turkey hunting, many believe that the modern practice of eating turkey started with the first Thanksgiving meal. Okay, it's 1621. We're having what is probably the first. Thanksgiving feast is turkey a part of the proceedings? Let's learn a little bit about the proceedings and figure that question out. Yeah, that year, 1621, the Mayflower Pilgrims gathered with Native Americans for a three-day feast to celebrate the bountiful harvest. They all celebrated and gave thanks because there was a really good. Harvest. By the way, when we're talking about a harvest, we're talking about the gathering of ripe or ready crops. You grow corn, let's say, all year long, and when it's ready, you go ahead and you harvest it. Okay, you pick that stuff and you get it ready to either eat or to sell in a market or something like that. That's what harvest is all about. That time of year when you gather ripe or ready crops. For example, this year's harvest. Came a few weeks early. Yeah, we had to pick all of that stuff 
early because otherwise it might have gone bad. Now it says next, since turkeys are native to North America and historical records mention wild turkey hunting, many believe that the modern practice of eating turkey started with the first Thanksgiving meal. So there you go. It all kind of works out. Yeah, because there were turkeys in North America. They are a native bird. So the idea of these people eating turkey together makes sense. Now, if they said, oh, mm. the first Thanksgiving meal was pizza and dim sum and sushi, People might go, yeah, uh, I don't think so. They didn't have that foods in America. They didn't have those foods in America back then. But Turkey they did have, and we know this because of historical records. Now, history, of course, is the study of events in the past. If you study history, you're learning about, you know, things that happened in the past, wars, kings, queens, things like that. Anything that is relating to history is historical. This was a historical moment. This is a very historical book. There's a historical castle in that old city. So it's from the past, it's important to history, and if you're interested in things like that, it will be very cool. For example, Linda wrote a paper on great historical figures of the 20th century. So people who were important and changed history. There you go. Now we also have this verb mention to talk about. Okay, when you mention something, you talk about that thing, but not in great detail. You might bring it up, but you don't discuss it a whole lot. So here we've got records. They mention wild turkey hunting. Sure, no one wrote a book about wild turkey hunting at this time in American history, but there are some mentions of that. People have referred to this activity or talked about it, though not in a lot of detail. Anyways, yes, you can use the word mention as a verb. You can mention something. Something can be mentioned. But if you do mention something, you can call that a mention of something. You can use the word as a noun as well. For example, you forgot to mention that Pam would be at the party. If you had said that, if you had told me that, I wouldn't have come because Pam is my enemy. I didn't know Pam was going to be at the party. That's you, why I didn't mention it. Gosh, but she's my mortal have, enemy. You should have mentioned she's your mortal enemy. You've never mentioned that to me before. How am I supposed to Maybe know? Maybe that is an oversight on my part. All right, have some turkey. All right, folks, let's go ahead and take a turkey break, but we'll be back soon. 我们要来看看一六二一年那一个重要的感恩节活动里，人们是不是就有吃火鸡大餐了？那 Joe 宝是一开始用到 proceedings 这个字是指行动活动，这个字是拼作 p r o c e e d i n g s proceedings。那它当行动活动来解释的时候，固定会用复数形。好，在一六二一年那一年呢，五月花号上的这个清教徒和美洲原住民聚在一起吃了三天的大餐来庆祝大丰收，这就像吃了三天的板豆一样哎。好，那么 feast feast。它可以当名词或当动词，当名词就表示大餐盛宴，当动词就表示享用。另外，文中的 pilgrim， pilgrim， 它表示清教徒，尤其是指一六二零年来到美国的英国清教徒。那这时候 p 是要大写的，如果改小写的话 ，pilgrim 则是指朝圣者。好，我们再来看单字 harvest， harvest 表示收成、收获。课文里面用到 bountiful 来形容收成，那么 bountiful 是形容充足的、丰富的。课文接着提到，由于火鸡原生于北美洲，而且历史记录还有提到有狩猎野生火鸡，所以很多人就认为现代吃火鸡的惯例就是从那个第一次感恩节大餐开始的。真的是这样吗？好，那我们先来看两个单字 ，historical。historical 它是形容词，形容历史的、历史上的。mention。Mention 它可以当动词或当名词来表达提到、说起。好，那单字例句写到说，你忘了提到 Pam 会出席派对，你早该跟我讲的。好，那这时候 Jeff 老师开玩笑说 ，Pam 是他的 mortal enemy， mortal enemy 就表示冤家死对头。好，他开玩笑的。我们接着回到课文中。Which came first, the turkey or Thanksgiving? However, based on writings from that period, that may not be true. In one letter, it was mentioned that the men gathered fowls, which could also have referred to ducks, geese, or swans, for the celebratory feast. 
It may be that eating turkey was common among the pilgrims and Native Americans, but there's not much to support the claim that this bird was actually served at the first Thanksgiving. All right, so 1621, what might have been the first Thanksgiving of them all was a big turkey on the center of the table there. Was that the, st was a turkey a yeah. star of the show? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Not necessarily. Get <sighs> this, however, based on writings from that period, that may not be true. So, so it was sushi and pizza. No, oh. there, it wasn't sushi and pizza. And even though there was mention of wild turkey hunting, it doesn't necessarily mean that a turkey did find its way onto the table there during the first Thanksgiving feast. Yeah, in one letter, get this, it was mentioned, there's that verb mention again, in one letter it was mentioned that the men gathered fowls, which could also have referred to ducks, geese, or swans, birds. Okay, it could have referred to, okay, we could have referred to here these birds for this or the celebratory feast. So, here we do have fowls. There will mm. be birds on the table there, but do we know for sure that one of these birds was a turkey? Interesting. It'd be like, yeah, so we had meat for dinner. That could be beef or pork or lamb or lots of things can be meat. Mm. And yeah, a lot of things can be fowl. I mean, people talk about guinea hens or partridges or sure. pheasant. These are all fowl. A fowl is basically a bird, bird. that will be hunted and eaten, right? Sure. That's how we often use it. But it doesn't actually say turkey. Does not. Very interesting. So it says it may be that eating turkey was common among the pilgrims and Native Americans. But there's not much to support the claim that this bird was actually served at the first Thanksgiving. So sure, people at that time in that place did eat turkey, but we don't have the menu. It doesn't actually say turkey with a brown sauce. It could have been duck or swan or any other kind of bird. There you go. Wow. Not an ostrich, though. Impossible. No. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. Day two of our lesson is coming up soon. 第一次的感恩节大餐就是以火鸡来当主角吗？好，根据那个年代的作品来看，可能不是这么一回事哦。在某一封信里面有提到，男人们为了庆祝盛宴而收集的禽类。哎，禽类有可能是指鸭、鹅啊，或是天鹅等等，对不对？好，那么 fowl 这个字就表示禽鸟，尤其是指家禽。刚刚 Mike 老师还提到一些鸟类，像 guinea hen 是猪鸡、山鸡，还有 pheasant。Pheasant 是雉鸡，那这些也都是禽鸟。不晓得当时那些男人们到底抓了哪些禽类来庆祝。好，那文中一个补充单字 celebratory， celebratory， 它是形容庆祝的、祝贺的。好，那到底在第一个感恩节里面，人们有没有把火鸡端上桌呢？事实上，并没有很多证据支持这个说法。那我们在第二天课文会继续追查火鸡这件事、啊。好，以上是今天的讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍的文法重点有三个，第一个是 such 加上 a 或是 an 加形容词加名词加上 that 子句；第二个是 come to 加原形动词；第三个是 be known as。好，我们先来学 such 加上 a 或 an 加形容词加名词再加上 that 子句。好，那么前半部的 such a 形容词、名词，或是 such an 形容词、名词，这部分表示如此怎么样的人事物，像 such a crazy story 如此荒唐的故事 ，such a pretty girl 如此漂亮的女孩等等。我们后面再接 that 子句，这样就可以表达说什么如此怎么样，以至于怎么样。例如 ，It is such a cold. Day that we feel like staying at home. 今天天气如此寒冷，以致我们想要待在家里。好，接着来学 come to 加原形动词。come to 加原形动词就表示开始怎么样，逐渐怎么样。这通常是指经过一段时间后，事情逐渐演变成某个状况。例如 ，Her parents didn't like the dog at first. 
but they eventually came to consider it part of the family. 一开始他爸妈不喜欢那只狗狗，但最后他们逐渐把它视为家庭的一份子。真的，很多长辈一开始很排斥毛小孩，最后还不是爱的跟什么一样。好，我们最后来学 be known as. Known 是指已知的、知名的。Be known as 就表示被称为什么，以什么什么而为人所知。那么 as 的后面常常会接是表示身份啊、职业称号等等的名词。例如，新竹 is known as the windy city。大家都知道新竹被称为风城。好，那再造一个例句哦。Namie Amulo is known as the queen of J-pop。安室奈美惠被称为日本流行乐天后，真希望她赶快再复出。好，不管怎么样，以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。Everybody, 欢迎来到就爱讲英文。英文我是 Holly， 我是 Steven。那今天要学到的东西呢，是让你有好人缘的英文句。好，<笑>第一个呢是 You're the cream of the crop。OK， 这个呢其实是还有蛮有历史的一句话。Oh. 那为什么你是 cream of the crop？ Cream 是什么？ Cream 就是奶油啊， mm. 那个上面的那个白白色的那个东西。没错，那 crop 是什么？就是我们的稻田。OK， 比如说苹果啊，还是任何的蔬菜啊，就是可以是田农作物、嗯。对，没错。那 cream 呢，在十六世纪开始，因为 cream 你要买这个东西，其实以前是很难去制造这个东西的， mm. 所以它很贵。所以以前的人，如果你有 cream 在你的 party， 大家就说<笑> they have cream， <笑>就知道这个 party 超高级的。<笑>所以后来这个东西就慢慢的，它一直就变成 the best 啊，最好的。所以之前只有有钱人可以有 cream 哦。嗯，是，以前 cream 真的是还蛮难制作的、嗯，除非他家里是自己来弄 cream， 也许他可以做得出来。但是这个东西是很难制作、啊，然后真的就是比较呃比较。高级的一个一个食物，所以有点像这一个整个田里面最好最棒的那几个农作对，就是你最棒棒<笑>那个意思。You're the cream of the crop. OK， <笑>那这个现在讲的时候，也许有些人会觉得有一点 outdated， 对，有点老套。<笑>但是人是向着赞美你的时候，你还是要说谢谢。OK， 好，接下来呢是如果今天这个人做出一个事情，还是他穿那个衣服，完全就是他的风格的时候，你就适合讲。It's so you。对，好，那刚刚我们的编辑呢，他说，哎，这个是不是有的时候听起来有点比较偏女生会讲的，对不对？嗯、其实男孩也会讲，但是如果你硬要把它听起来比较 man 一点，你可以说 It's so you, man。哈哈哈哈哈！加一个 man， 就加一个 man， 就觉得哦，对对对，他不娘。哎、欸，现在没有性别歧视，大家都可以讲，好不好？没错，这也是一个重点，啊、真的，嗯、大家 you can say whatever you want， <笑>、okay? 你什么都可以讲。<笑>没错，现在 it's so you， 我现在把 you 把它变成一个形容词、嗯，对不对？那今天如果 Holly 做出一个事情，然后超出他风格，比如他摔倒，就觉得哇，平常都会摔倒那个人，我说 it's so Holly， 对我也把 Holly 这个名字变成一个形容词。好，接下来呢 ，Number three 是 ，I couldn't agree with you more。就是我真的非常认同你的想法，我认同你到我不能再认同了，因为我已经极致的认同你了。Uh... 所以就是已经没有办法再更认同 ，like agree with you more 对。对对，无法再更多。Uh... 但如果今天我就是不认同你，我就是。跟你就是没有办法再更不认同。I couldn't disagree with you more， 就加个 dis。哎，那是不是可以说 I couldn't agree with you？ 哎，如果是很认同的话，那可以用 less 吗？嗯、mm, ，I couldn't agree with you less， 那你就不会说这一句，你就说、uh, I kind of agree with you、oh.。<笑>对啊、uh, ，kind of、uh,。OK、ah.。好，第四句呢是 Never say die 啊、oh,。好严重哦。别灰心啊，不要死啊！永远不要觉，因为死就是 die 就是结结束嘛，<笑> the end， 对不对？所以是永远不要觉得这是 the end。那现在呢， yeah. 很多人也会说 never say never。哦，永远不要说永远不会。对，还是 never give up。不要放弃。然后另外一句是 it ain't over until it's over。
哦，所以还没有到真正结束，它还没真正结束，好绕口，真的还蛮绕口的。<笑>好，今天的英文呢，就是让你有好人缘的英文句，所以我们要看看要怎么使用它们。Let's do live action. The dancing show was awesome. You're the cream of the crop. Thanks. Actually, I made a small mistake. I have no idea how this could happen. Never say die. That was your debut. Don't push yourself too hard. I couldn't agree with you more. Still, I've already made a training plan. I wish every show would be perfect in the future. It's so you. Dee, you're the cream of the crop. Dee, er. It's so you. Dsan, I couldn't agree with you more. Dsan, never say die.